First, let's look at the filter design. This is a 7-pole low-pass filter optimized for 7 MHz. It consists of three inductors and four capacitors. Many of these designs call for the use of cheap, low permeability iron core toroidal inductors. But for our filter, we're going to be switching and using high permeability, high quality ferrite products toroids, which will require fewer turns due to the magnetic advantages that ferrite has over powdered iron. The ferrite toroids used in this project, along with the capacitors, are available from ferrite products distributors. In order to check to see if our low pass filter is working, we will be checking the output with the tiny spectrum analyzer. This, this device came on the market recently and could show the RF spectrum up to about 900 megahertz. It's not a lab grade device, but for hobbyists it has a lot of useful features. If our filter works, we should see the filter output decrease rapidly at frequencies over 9 megahertz. If we change the toroids from powdered iron to ferrite, fewer turns will be required. The original design called for one of the toroids to have 24 turns and the other two to have 21. Let's look at the toroid permeability calculator on the ferrite products website to see how many turns will be required with ferrite toroids. Ferrite Mix 61 is a good choice for inductive designs less than 25 MHz. So let's pick a common FR61 toroid available from Ferrite's distribution network. FR61 has an initial perm of 125, which is much greater than the powdered iron cores sometimes specified for these filters. Let's enter the dimensions of Ferrite part number 596-1000-101 into the perm calculator. The object here is to pick the number of turns that gets us closest to the permeability 125. The OD of our toroid is 5.83 millimeters. The ID is 3.05 millimeters. And the height is 1.53 millimeters. Next, we're going to enter the series inductance of our first inductor, which is 1.38 microhenries. We're going to go ahead and enter that into the calculator. Next, we're going to take a guess that perhaps five turns might be enough to get to a design perm of 125. Let's enter five in, hit enter, come down. We find that we're fairly well over 125. So what we're going to do is take a guess and change this number to seven turns, hit enter, and see what we come up with. Perm of 142 is close enough to 125. Again, this method isn't exact. There are differences in permeability, differences in winding. So it's just a good starting point uh, to decide how many turns will get you to a design inductance. We're going to go ahead and wind our toroid now. I've wound the cores and mounted them with the capacitors on a breadboard to form our 7-pole low-pass filter. I will inject a signal from a signal generator in order to test the filter. We're going to set up our, our signal generator sweep from 2 MHz up to 30 MHz. First, we're not going to feed it through the filter. We're going to feed it directly into the tiny spectrum analyzer to check to see if the output is level and consistent. As the frequency generator begins its sweep upwards, we can see from the screen of the tiny spectrum analyzer that the output is consistent and steady. Now we'll connect our signal generator into our low pass filter then read the output with the tiny spectrum analyzer. With the signal generator sweeping upwards from 2 MHz through 30 MHz feeding our low pass filter we can now see the resulting scan. As we start at 2 MHz we see a relatively uh, steady output at minus 30 dBm. Um, as it up, goes up through 7, 8, 9 megahertz, we begin to see a, a rather rapid drop-off, uh, indicating that our low-pass filter is working and doing exactly what it should be doing.